so I went back and I watched more of her live. I kind of like skipped through it and watch a little bit at a time and maybe I spoke too soon. It sounded like she took accountability for some things. Also, um, she spoke about a lot of what I spoke about in this reading. I think the only thing that she probably didn't speak on, remind you, I did skip around. So she, I don't think that she knows everything that had happened when it comes to Alihio and Zoka. So, mm, I was debating, should I put this up on YouTube or not? And I think I might just keep it on the podcast for right now. And then maybe later on in the future, if he speaks about uh, what I spoke about in this, then I will put it on the YouTube page. But for right now, I'm just going to release it here. So the first 20 minutes, I kind of like was talking, kind of ranting about how she started out the live and my perspective of it. And then after that, I get into the reading. So I pull a few cards on why she left carbonation. Um and what happened and like what's going on in carbonation now that Alihio has left. So that's pretty much it. Um, maybe later I will do more of an update or something. It depends, like it just, it depends. So right now, I'm going to release this on the podcast and then maybe later on in the future I'll release it on YouTube, you know, because I don't feel like it's one of my best readings <laughs> because a lot of what I spoke about, I didn't know about it, but when I went back and listened to the live and skipped through it, I noticed that she mentioned a lot of what I talked about, so... You know, it is what it is. But if you think I should put it up on YouTube for whatever reason, I know that one of my YouTubers, um, they have a hearing aid and they need my readings to be on YouTube so they could put the captions on. So let me know. Let me know. But I don't feel like this reading is really anything new in it because she mentioned a lot of what I spoke about so just letting you know all right y'all all right so um I wasn't motivated to do a reading on the Terry because I already knew she was going to leave And um, <clears throat> I knew it was going to take some time for her to speak because her situation was embarrassing. And I was expecting her to take some time and to truly process it. And then hopefully it can create some real change within her. And she could come back being better and stronger. But I watched some of a video of a live that she recently did. Where she talking about people don't want to see her be herself or see her be happy or, you know, a whole lot of bullshit. And 
I just disappointed because I realized that she's a person that can't take accountability. She trying to make this whole situation seem like a spiritual journey, but nah, you was following the, the flesh. She was disconnected from spirit. That's why she even had that experience. And I feel like what she is putting out there is misleading to a lot of people, especially young people, especially people who want to be members of Carbonation. And to me, that's selfish. It's just straight selfish and because she went back to a very abusive situation just because she thought that she would find love. So that tells me she got some deep insecurities within herself that she needs to be validated by somebody to love her. But she try to act like that's not what it is. She trying to make it seem like what we are looking at is the actions of a confident, divine woman. And um, I understand having pride and ego, but I feel like she being really reckless and really, um, what's the word? <clears throat> All I could think of is selfish, like hella selfish. I understand, like, she's a young spirit, like, and she might consider herself like an old soul, but she ain't, she's a very young spirit, and, you know, this is her experience, and I understand that, but it's like, it's the position that she wants to be in, that's what really gets me. Um, she wants to be a leader. She wants to help other women. She wants to be like known as like a spiritual guru or something like that. Before she was, before she went back to Carbonation, that's how she was talking. And I feel like by her fronting like she did, when she love, I feel like that's the direction that she trying to go in, which, you know, it makes sense to me because a lot of these spiritual people out here, these so-called gurus and shit, they all full of shit. They don't care nothing about people. All they care about is that money. They want to be praised and worship to get your check. They don't care nothing about your well-being. They don't care nothing about your spiritual journey. Because I know for a fact that um, <clears throat> we don't have the answers for other people. If I was to write a book right now that tell you everything that I did to get to the point that I am now in my spiritual journey, that doesn't mean that I think that would work for you. But everything is energy, you know, and you could find you could follow the energetic print, do it your own way and see a change with that but see what Nateri is doing is that she leaving a very fucked up 
energetic print. And then she cover it with these words and talking a certain type of way to make it seem like something that is ain't. So I guess that's why um, I noticed that people like ask me very specific questions like who is the baby daddy and stuff like that. Like, I don't know all, I don't see all, and, um, sometimes I get visuals, but sometimes I don't. It's, so I'm going to try my best, but it's whatever that comes to me, you know? And I don't want to be a person that knows and see all like I like things to come to me gradually because just imagine like just imagine if you were somebody that could just know everything you know I mean there's a lot of things that we can know by tapping into our spirit but um Just imagine how hard that would be on a person to know all. So we had to watch her leave. And then she talked about women empowerment. She talked about being there for women. She talked about wanting to be a leader to women. But from what we've seen, she has a lot to learn and nobody is bashing her for that. Well, at least I'm not. I don't know how old she is, but I'm 32 and I made a lot of mistakes when I was in my early 20s. Like, damn. (laughs) I made a lot of mistakes. Um, I had abusive relationships. Like, I went through a lot. And I'm prideful too, so I understand, but I like to be honest. I like to be real. I like to be truthful. I know that sometimes it's hard to be that, but the truth is already there out in the open, so it's like she trying to come out of this by kicking dirt over the shit instead of acknowledging that it's shit there <laughs> like so it, it was disappointing to see that that nothing has really changed she hasn't really learned anything from the experience I did not watch the whole video but she started out with that and I remember her saying that last time saying that people are saying stuff about her like who is saying that because it's not her who's saying it I mean you worry about the wrong motherfucking thing and then she talk about I'm on my spiritual journey and all of this and people try to hurt me and stuff like that nah man just own up to what you can own up to that's the only way you're going to stop making mistakes because she came out and she said that she was on the side of those women but her actions showed different and that's because she only cared about herself She came out, she said that she cared about the well-being, the well-being of women, 
but her actions show different. Not only did she go back to a very toxic situation, but she allowed herself to get played because she didn't set, she didn't stand firmly on anything except for what she wanted. Because she thought she was in love when she went there. But she was easily persuaded to be in love with somebody else. And the somebody else is somebody that she watched abuse many people. Not only that, but we seen the way that she treated Malia. She was a bully to that girl. Malia did not want to fight. Malia did not want any of that. That was that was a good opportunity to show how much she cared about the well-being of women. If she can't take accountability for that, she can't ever get any respect from me. Like own up to your shit. You bully that girl. You wanted to take that other girl, man. You got played. You didn't respect yourself enough to say no. When you got that and you seen that Solar was playing games and he didn't want you and all that shit that he wrote you was a facade. You should have left. Because that's what you came there for. Now, if it was that and that alone, I mean, I wouldn't feel the way that I feel now. Like, but nah, it's deeper than that. There's a reason. There's something within her that she really need to work on that made her go to. See that this dude is playing some type of games with you. And then when Eligio went to push up on her, knowing the type of person that he is, knowing how he disrespect women. And she said that she recognized abuse when she see it. Before she went back, she said she know what a narc is. After he, on several occasions, dogged her and played her out, several occasions of watching him being abusive to the other women, none of those times did she ever stand on what she said that she motherfucking stand on. It wasn't one time that I seen her, and maybe she would be like, well, you can't see everything. Yeah, that's true. But the opportunities that we did see that you have, you never, you, she didn't take any opportunity to show that she actually stand on what she stand on. And then she come out of the cult or whatever, and she could possibly be pregnant. Meaning that she went there, got dogged out by that dude. She got passed over to the narc uh, cult leader. Then he played her, dog it out, dog her out after having his way with her. Then she was passed back to the other dude, possibly. I don't know if she did or not. And then after a while, she finally got the whole thing. Oh, I'm for the leave. And now she's talking about people keep saying I'm going to go back. Of course, they're going to say that you're going to go back. Because last time... 
she had people really convinced that she wasn't and that she had strong boundaries now that she grew from that that she changed that she learned something just for her to go back and make the same motherfucking mistakes show show people that she don't really have any boundaries she don't truly have any respect for herself she don't really love herself she do not have any answers she got a lot of work to do before she could get answers to other women she can't take accountability or own up for the she hurt people in that process Yet she can't find it in her to apologize or to stand up or to speak up about what's happening. And then she talking about all these haters. She her number one hater. I really feel like she wants to be loved. I feel like she wants some type of steady relationship and all of that I really feel like she looking for love and I understand that people make mistakes but you can only grow if you take accountability and because she's on a public pap platform and it's people who look up to her or look at her as somebody to I don't know get guidance from or something like that if she really cared about the people that is looking at her for guidance then she should keep it real i mean all the way 100 she don't have to tell people everything that went on with her but she could at least take accountability for some of her actions because it really hurt some women out here to watch how she treated malia to watch her let this i mean Alihio is less than her. He's more, I mean, he's less than her. The way that he hurt people shows that. And no, I don't see her as a narc or a sociopath or a bad person. I feel like she just easily led astray because she want validation so bad i just feel like she don't love herself i just feel like she don't really respect herself i don't feel like she have healthy boundaries so it's not like i'm mad at her i'm just i'm disappointed you know because when i heard that she left i was like I don't, I don't really I haven't been really into doing readings on carbonation because um nothing is changing these people don't evolve they don't grow it's like the same thing over and over again it's like they're stuck in this loop and if I continue to do readings on the loop, I'm just going to become redundant. I'm just going to be saying the same thing over and over and over again, you know? And even if other people is not tired of hearing me say the same thing over and over again, I'm going to get tired of that because I hate cycles. I really do. It makes me agitated. I do whatever to break out of a fucking cycle. And I also feel like they really easy 
to read. Um, not just through tarot cards, but psychologically, socially, all of that. They just really easy to see through. So I want to take these moments and try to trigger some type of healing. And you know what? I'm going to give Nateri love and compassion. Like, I love her for real. I don't know her. I ain't never talked to her or anything. But I got love for her because I understand where she at because I've been there before. There was a time that I didn't love myself and I was very insecure. And that's when I end up in a narcissist, narcissist, narcissistic relationship that... I didn't even know why I was in it. I was like, damn, why I'm letting this person treat me like this? Like, why? So, um, I understand. But there's something that's not clicking with her. Because you're supposed to learn from the mistakes and she don't seem to be learning it. She it seemed like she run towards it. She run towards these mistakes. And that's something else that I'm not quite understanding, you know, because after Eligio, she go to these other narcs people that are in similar positions. She seemed to have a type And, damn, I mean, there's somebody for everybody. So, if she does have a type, just own up to that shit. Don't make it seem like something that is not, man. Just be real about it. Come, Be like, yo, I like narcissistic dudes that have money. They talk a good spiritual game, but they still be on that Babylon type shit or whatever they call it that's her type that's what she like but don't come out don't be showing us these behaviors and then coming out and being like you know this is me loving myself this is me being myself this is me nah because you presenting different egos like I mean I'm not confused but it's like I be feeling sad for her like if she was my sister she would just be breaking my heart Man, she was my sister, man. I'd be causing a motherfucking scene. Like, I really would be. I, I, child. Child, 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 child. If she was my daughter, oh, my. Oh, child. Oh, I can't. I can't even go there in my mind. I can't even go there in my mind. I'm way too protective over people I care about. I probably go to jail. Ask the people I care about. I don't ask the people I care about. I take shit real personally. When shit happens to them, I feel like it's happening to me. Alright, 
so I put some cards on her state of being like right now and all right so this was a concern when I was watching the recording or whatever is that she do have a lot of pride and ego and there is a possibility that she tried to condone the shit that's happening in carbonation just so it will help her reputation you know it's like a a weird place but it's due to the fact that she's still listening and she's affected by the programming of Alihio like I'm seeing him telling her on multiple occasions like if you leave here and you try to say stuff about us, like people not gonna believe you and you're gonna look like a traitor, you're gonna look like crazy or something, and she believes that. She believed that mentality, but that's not true. It's definitely not it's not true to me that if she was to speak about what truly happened and speak about the truth that I'm gonna look at her like a traitor or something it's not gonna be the case for me well for one I already know the truth for two um, when somebody is being themselves they being real and authentic you know you notice it and you can feel it <clears throat> My bad, y'all. I drunk something with some apple cider vinegar, and it like fuck fucked up my throat. Cause I didn't dilute it good enough. All right. So there's something that's haunting her about Alihio that make her feel like she can't really talk about what happened and the things that happened And she's very guarded right now, but in the near future, I feel like she will be letting down her guards. I feel like I feel like she's gonna be real. Something is gonna change her point of view or Something's going to touch her heart in a way that is going to help her to put her guards down. Tapping into her energy makes me want to cry. She's hurt from not just this situation, but she feel like people are always hurting her. She feel like she can't really trust people. And I feel like it's going to be somebody actually showing her love, like true love, authentic love. I'm feeling like it's a woman. It could even be like this video. But it's going to help her find her way. 
I feel like Nateri is a powerful person. I feel like she just have lessons to learn. I feel like um, Nateri might have always been like the black sheep. She always felt like she didn't really fit in. So she really is looking for family. She's really hurt about the things that happened when she was there. She really, like, it bruised her ego. Um, it broke her heart because she really thought Solar loved her. And I feel like he has feelings for her. I really do. It's just that he lost you know, and this is a lesson for women. Like, if you see a man in a position where he can't even help himself, don't take on that burden. You know, because a lot of times that man is not going to become what, what you need him to be unless he get there on his own. Because even if you help him, even if you help build him into the man that you wanted him to be, it's like he going to look at you like you his crutch. And it's that energy like... It really is hard to be in a relationship with somebody that you feel like you owe them. You feel like you obligated. It's really hard to sustain those type of relationships. I mean, there's a difference because... Like, let's say that you meet somebody in college and y'all both are working on your aspirations and goals and dreams and stuff like that. And y'all build together because y'all got into a relationship and y'all continue to work on whatever goals that you had and y'all built it together. That's different. But when you see somebody that's completely broken, like they're an addict or something like that, like let's say that they're on drugs and you want them to get clean and stuff like that, that's a, a different situation. It would be best if you that person friend and maybe ever so often you help them but if you get a, if you get into a relationship with them and you try to clean them up completely like get them out of the gutter and build them up it's going to be a different energy that comes out of that it's going to be hard to have like a successful relationship i hope i'm making sense because so in a lot of ways what happened was spiritual protection like if she went there and Solar left with her what she would have retrieved from that would have been a mess and that would have bring even more years of suffering 
So it's a blessing in disguise that she don't have that baggage. But I do understand that because she really do got feelings for him. She really do. And she really did believe him because there was truth in it. I feel like Solar got caught. And that's why he switched sides. But I feel like he really is feeling Nateri. He just a coward. Like he doesn't have the confidence to actually go after what he want. He's not a man. He's still, he's still a little ass boy. And he can't grow up in that environment. So I'm asking like what made her leave and I got the seven of swords reverse and then at the bottom of the deck is five of wands. Listen, it been chaos in that carbonation camp since Alihio left. Like there's a lot of fights, there's a lot of arguments, there's a lot of abuse. And even at a distance, Alihio still maintained a lot of control over them. So what I felt like what made her love is her conscious. Like she started to have feelings of regret, asking herself, questions of why she's there and she started to look back at her actions and it started to really fuck with her what I do feel is that she was able to see more of Solar she was able to get closer to him and she didn't like what she seen. She didn't like the fact that um um what I'm hearing is workaholic and I'm seeing like Solar constantly questioning himself like even at a distance, Solar was still trying to prove himself to Alihio. It was just like she seen that he was just too far gone. Like he was really brainwashed. And I felt like she even told him that. I felt like she really tried to talk to him she really tried to like convince him that this is not what you should be doing with your life and I feel like hmm Alihio be knowing, like, I don't, like, it's people, like, there, like, they snitch on each other, but he also just be knowing. So, when the Terry was trying to, like, convince Solar to think differently, Damn, Alihio might even had a dream about it or something, but I felt like he called Solar and re brainwashed him. <laughs> nah, it's more so.
that um Alihio heard about them getting close and him just thinking like oh that's a possibility that she will try to convince him so he made sure to get between that any means necessary Her and Zoka might have got into a fight. Like a physical one. Like, if they haven't gotten into a physical fight, they was in a lot of arguments. And she might have spent some time with them and then some time apart. Whatever they live in situation is, it's not like steady. And like I feel like they trying to work on something but they keep coming into issues. Whatever the environment is, it's crazy as hell. Like, um, people really going through internal struggles, like being apart from Alihio. But he keep, like, he still maintain control from a distance just by talking to them. And I feel like he have a few people, like, spying so they like snitching on each other, telling on each other. Yeah. I feel like she was with them for a little while, but then there was too many disagreements, too many arguments, too many fights. And I felt like she started to go into a depression. A very powerful introspection where she was really feeling like the burn of her actions, actions that she took. And it really hurt her to come to the realization like, she felt like he never really cared about her. Mm. I do feel like Nateri is going to collab with somebody. Something's going to cause a change where she's going to start to want to tell what really happened and speak about her experience. But I feel like 
she need to be careful about coming off too defensive because that's the mood that she's in because she feel like everybody is against her so she feel like she really have to defend herself and she might be overly aggressive which may be the, the energy that she need but she need to make sure she directing it where it needs to be directed to the correct person and place or thing Because right now, it seems like she's like that with everybody. And not everybody deserved that. To be real, I felt like her and Solar were starting to get close. But I think that Zoka did something to get between them. Like, I feel like she might have snitched on them or something. And it caused the energy of betrayal. Hmm. And I feel like Zoka tried a little bit of everything. First acting like she was cool with it. Then kind of like pulling away, becoming distance. Then like starting arguments, drama, fights, disagreements. Then I feel like she eventually talked to Elihio and told him that, um, that Nateri was getting in the way of Solar like doing his work or being on his mission or something like that and that would work because after that what what did Alihio do what did Alihio do after that <clears throat> do in response of that the first card that came out is the hangman so what I'm getting from that is that he called him and made him think a different way about Natiri and it was like some It was like some dumb shit, like high school stuff, like how you gonna let a woman control you or something like that. Like he attacked his ego. And then he like planted bad seeds. Like I felt like he gave Zoka permission to act in a certain type of way. He played mind games with Solar. He might have even tried to get back with Nateri to show Solar like she's not faithful to you and cause some type of conflict he might even push Nateri out
So if Nateri is pregnant, um, I believe that is by Solar. I feel like there are times when Elihil left that they got really close. Like, I see them even laying next to each other, like, talking and everything. And he keep coming up in the Terry cards as the King of Cups. But when I was pulling cards for him, I kept getting the page. So... Her perception of him is completely different from what he really is. But I asked, is Nateri pregnant? And the first card I got is the King of Cups upright. So I do feel like there's a possibility of her being pregnant by Solar. But there could be some confusion, like her believing that she pregnant by Solar, but may not be really sure about it with this moon card. It might take her some time to even talk about it because she feeling really strongly about it but like in a negative way feeling like she caused a lot of her own problems feeling like she's not ready for that type of commitment our responsibility when she think back at carbonation she doesn't get a good feeling it was a bad experience for her So I'm going to end this with um, seeing how Zoka, Solar, Nateri, and Alihio feel about each other. So the person that Nateri the most upset with is Alihio. I feel like Alihio really did do something to get between her relationship with Solar. And I'm talking about recently, the reason why she left. Because I'm, I asked how did Nateri feel about Alihio right now. And I got, I can't get any cooperation. I'm disappointed in how things are right now. I can't face them at this moment. And I'm not losing any more sleep over this. And then on how Alihio feel about Nateri I got, I feel good about this change. I know it was for my highest good. I'm feeling insecure. I have a list of things I want to change about myself. I care about what people think about me. And this is a star card reverse. So I'm feeling like he feel like he was successful in breaking the Terry like he was successful he felt like he won because to him this was some type of competition and with this nine of cups reverse I let a good one get away
I feel like this is saying that if he could, he would have had things just a little more different. Like, he still wanted more out of Natiri. Like, maybe had sex with her a few more times. He wanted to do more to her. And then when it comes to Zoka feelings with this tower card, I really feel like Alihio and Zoka work together to bring the Terry down in some type of way or to get her to leave or to manipulate Solar into distancing himself from her because hmm I'm seeing like constant communication between Zoka and Alihio and uh, Zoka being kind of surprised that whatever happened worked so well because I felt like it was like something kind of abrupt a change in Solar that really like push Natiri away like he might have talked to Alihio and then came back different and was like I don't think you good for me or something like that but I feel like Zoka may be feeling a little guilty about her actions and what happened cause I feel like there was some lies there was a lot of manipulation so it's not sitting well with her And I feel like there's parts of this that Natiri still doesn't know. But I feel like it's going to come out. I feel like Alihio is going to talk about it because he's so... He, like, he just... He gets so excited about his deceit. Like, he thinks he's so clever, clever about deceiving people and tricking them or getting them to see things the way that he see things so he feel like he's a mastermind and manipulation so I feel like he will talk more about it and then that's how Natiri is going to learn more Because I feel like there was a moment that uh, Nateri and Solar was getting close. And she was going to like accept the fact that Zoka was there. She left feeling like she had to let Solar go because he didn't want her. But when I asked Solar how he feeling about her now, and I got the strength card in reverse, I'm starting to feel ashamed of my actions. I doubt I can find the conf confidence to continue. 
And he been feeling ashamed. He been feeling ashamed because he do like her. He really do. But he just not able to make decisions for himself. He too much of a coward. He too afraid to stand up for himself or make decisions for himself. And he too easily manipulated by Alihio. But he see Nateri like the Queen of Cups and she see him like the King of Cups. So it's like that he feel like they divine counterparts, but people convince him that she was the problem. That she's trying to manipulate him or get into his head. And I feel like Zoka and Alihio did something to help really install this. And man, Solar is very critical on himself. Like, he reminds me of Ephraim. Constantly thinking about his actions, constantly, constantly thinking about upsetting Alihio, trying to prove himself to him, trying to be his best self before Alihio and in the image of what Alihio say what a man is. So He's painfully insecure and he constantly criticizing himself. He can't make decisions on his own at this point. The brainwashing is so deep. But on an emotional level, on a heart level, he do got feelings for Nateri. And he felt like they are connected. So there is a real connection here. There's a real connection. But I feel like it was just like out the blue that he changed up on her and was like, you know what? You're not good for me or... You know, I think that we need to slow down or something like that. Because the first card I got for him is that I just had an epiphany. I know what I have to do now. So it was kind of like out of the blue, he made it seem like an aha moment. But there was things going on behind the scenes that was manipulating the situation. I also felt like Solar was afraid to get too attached to her and he was feeling like he will so he kind of pushed her away it's like if he was to choose her and be with her he wanted to leave Carbonation but if he stay with Zoka, it's okay for him to stay and be in that same hell where he is comfortable at. And he didn't want to leave his comfort zone. So he sabotaged this relationship. But... Alright y'all, I'm going to wrap it up here. Stay blessed.